I'm going to start things off by talking about IVIS physics, specifically standard definition versus high definition, and basically talking about the physics principles that lead to the differences between the two imaging modalities. So let's start off by talking about the beginning of intravascular ultrasound. So in 1953, uh, Engay Edler um, was in charge of the Division of Cardiology at the Lund Hospital in Sweden. And his position was to try to figure out a way to assess mitral valve disease without having to do anything invasively. And so he got in touch with a junior colleague uh, by the name of Chris Hertz, and together they came up with a device that would be the predecessor for echocardiography. And what they were able to do was to use ultrasound waves to subsequently be able to image the mitral valve. And then that technology became the basis of other forms of intravascular imaging, uh, specifically IVIS. So it would be another decade or so before the first set of IVIS devices were first utilized. Um, they were utilized first in the large chambers, then the great vessels, and then subsequently moved on into the coronary vasculature. And so the, what you see on the left is the rotational IVIS system, which we'll go into detail about how that works and the physics around that. And then on the right is the phased array, which was developed a few years later in the 1970s. And again, there are differences in how they acquire the images and therefore the quality of the images that are ascertained. So on a very broad level, how does IVIS work? So IVIS, the way it works is that there's a transducer. The transducer creates sound waves. And then those sound waves are either reflected or they pass through structures depending on their acoustic impedance. Whatever bounces back is usually bright. Whatever goes through and doesn't bounce back is usually darker, okay? And then the IVIS system then converts those reflected sound waves into a series of tomographic cross-sectional images. And so uh, these images can then tell you the makeup of the vessel architecture. So IVIS is a tool, like I said, that really is contingent upon the reflection of ultrasound waves to generate an image, both to and away from the source. Now, audible sound and ultrasound are actually part of the same phenomenon, but the difference is that they have different frequency. So frequency is the number of waves per unit of time, okay? So the audible range that we uh, can listen is from 16 hertz all the way up to 10 to 20 kilohertz. After that, that's where ultrasound takes over. And so it starts at 20 kilohertz and moves forward. Now, one of the ways these ultrasounds are generated is that there is a, a piezoelectric transducer and then that transducer, there's some sort of excitation, and then it creates these sound waves. Now, when you look at sound waves, you see the sinusoidal pattern. So going back to some physics, you know that this is basically the construct of any sort of wave. Now, there are four parameters that are incredibly important to note when it comes to intravascular ultrasound. So the first is basically the frequency as we spoke about. That's the number of waves per unit of time. Now, related to the frequency is the wavelength. Now, the wavelength is the opposite. So if you have something that has a lot is, that's high frequency, the wavelength is going to be smaller and vice versa. And then the next part after that is actually the amplitude. Now, the amplitude and the height of the amplitude really affects sort of the brightness or the loudness of the signal. And all of that together, pieced together, kind of create our IVIS image. And different aspects of that IVIS image can be manipulated by changing some of these parameters. So let's talk about the uh, acoustic imp impedance, because what you really see how dark or light something is is predicated very strongly on the acoustic impedance of what you're trying to image. So let's take some of the mediums that are the most commonly used or seen. So air, water, blood, muscle, fat, and bone, and then the last being the actual transducer element. And so if you take their density and you multiply it by their velocity, you get the acoustic impedance. You see air has the lowest acoustic impedance. So what's going to happen is that these ultrasound waves are actually going to not bounce off or reflect because the impedance is exceptionally low. 
So when you look at IVIS, you see that air basically is black. Then when you go to something that has more body, much more acoustic impedance, such as calcium, you see that the acoustic impedance is markedly higher. And as a result, you're going to have greater reflection, and therefore it's going to be much brighter. Now, let's talk about the different types of IVIS systems. So the mechanical and or the rotational IVIS system is the IVIS system that allows for a higher megahertz or frequency image. And then there's the phased array. Now, they work slightly differently. So when you look at the mechanical system, there's a single transducer. This transducer rotates uh, approximately 1,800 rotations per minute to generate this image. Because of the fact that it has a higher frequency, this then has a much better resolution. And we'll talk about resolution shortly. Now, the phased array or the plug-and-play uh, type of IVIS, what you basically have are multiple transducer elements that are combined, and they each take a sector of the vessel, and they are fired sequentially so that it looks like it's rotating. But essentially, they're working independently, and they're all pieced together. Uh, but because of the way that's done, you have a lower resolution. Now, the ability to discriminate objects is very important. When we talk about resolution, it's if you have an element, how likely are you to see that element? So if you take a typical 20 megahertz IVIS transducer, the resolution is about 160 microns. However, if you take a 40 megahertz transducer, it's 80 to 100 microns. So you're able to see smaller and smaller elements and image them. So I want, to take a look, uh, I want you to take a look at this slide. Okay, so what you see on the top is uh, a transducer that has low frequency ultrasound. Okay, so it has a longer wavelength. And so if you have an item, okay, a detail, what you're going to see is that these waves, because they're a longer wavelength, lower frequency can go around that element and will not necessarily reflect off. And when it doesn't get reflected off, you're not going to image it or see it. On the other hand, when you have a higher frequency IVIS and you see that there is the same element, because of the shorter wavelength and the higher frequency, it will reflect off. And so these wavelengths will come back. So if you take a look at the objects on the left, on the top is a 20 megahertz, on the bottom is a 40 megahertz. And what you can see is that this is a calcific lesion. And essentially, you're able to see much more of the actual lumen of the one that is the higher megahertz, higher frequency catheter, compared to the lower frequency catheter. But it comes at a cost. So when you start to... Start to uh, bounce off of things, you then lose the penetration power. So if you look at the 20 megahertz, you can see that you can see farther out, that there's greater penetration. Compared to the higher frequency IVIS, there's lower penetration. You're less likely to see the adventitia and the like. Now, let's also talk about the differences in acoustic impedance and uh, another reason why this is important. So here are the three most commonly lesion, uh, three most common types of lesions that you're going to see. The one on, on the left, essentially, is just uh, soft plaque. The one in the middle is one with a fibrous cap, and the last one is with calcification. But the difference between the 20 and the 40 megahertz is that you start to see that there's way more of blood speckling and way more clarity when it comes to the actual lumen in the 40 megahertz compared to the 20 megahertz. And so if the 20 megahertz, if, if the 40 megahertz is better than the 20 megahertz, what about 60 megahertz? And so there, again, because you have a greater frequency, shorter wavelength, you're able to see more of the elements of the vessel. And so on the left, I, I think it's very hard to see that there's a dissection. But the same vessel, when you image it with a 60 megahertz catheter, you see that there's definitely a dissection and it's much more uh, readable. Now, there are multiple high-definition systems. The two that are most commonly used in the U.S. are the Assist HDI Kodama IVIS and then the 60 megahertz Boston Opti, uh, OptiCross that Boston Sci has. Now, these systems give you near OCT resolution. They've gotten that good. And I'm going to just quickly, for the interest of time, kind of go through um, some lesion subsets. So if you look at this lipidic plaque, 
you can see that the IVIS, the high definition IVIS, gives you something very comparable to what you see with OCT. And if you look at this combination of fibrocalcific plaque, again, you can sort of break down and see the two aspects of the fibrous plaque and the calcific plaque on the left with the high definition IVIS um, compared to OCT. And ultimately, uh, when you do a pullback, you basically can see from side to side that you have near OCT resolution and quality with the higher definition IVIS. So for the interest of time, we'll stop there. But again, the conclusions are that IVIS works by transmitting sound waves. They're either reflected or they pass through. And then whatever is reflected back is what's used to generate your cross-sectional images. There are two types of uh, SIM systems, rotational IVIS and phased array with rotational IVIS giving you slightly lower resolution compared to, uh, sorry, the phased array giving you lower resolution compared to the rotational IVIS. And now with higher frequency, 60 megahertz catheters, uh, you can get nearly OCT quality. Thank you.